Hey, if you're watching the replay of this previous live stream, check out the links down below. There are timestamps, chapter stamps, so you can go to specific parts of this live stream, and unless you don't want to watch the whole thing, although it'd be cool if you watched the whole thing, but check the description down below for timestamps. Here we go. Hey, make sure you guys check out our channel partner, Gamersubs. Go to gamersubs.gg. Use code Zach for 10% off. That's Z-A-K, or as you guys call it down in the United States, Z-A-K for 10% off. Keto-friendly, zero-calorie, neotropics, antioxidants, zero sugar. I drink it to keep myself going, to keep myself energized. Check out gamersubs.gg. Help support the channel. They are a channel partner. Use code Zach. We're going to get started here in just a little bit. You guys are all anxious. I'm anxious too, but I'm going to click this one more button and then we're going to go. Welcome to Zach Talks Tech. It's the weekly ZTT, ZTT live stream. I'm not even, I, we still haven't thought of a name. I'm just using the initials and putting it in there. So uh, we're just, you know, we're having fun with this here. Uh, welcome to the new year. As you guys can see, uh, when the calendar flipped, everything changed. Everything is different, right? No, it's not. But hey, we're going to try to have a positive attitude about it and everything. Um, tonight's a special stream. Uh, normally, it's just a rambling thing here with me. Uh, tonight, I have a very special guest, um, uh, a very special brand that is special to me. Um, first of all, I want to go through the chat real quick, see who we have here. 
I can see the stream up here. Uh, first in the chat, we got we got Latrell here. We got Alan Osborne. How you doing? Stephen D going through Genosis in the house. Mods, I need you to be on top of things tonight. We got uh, we got the Arc Boost. How you doing? Oh, no, okay. Ooh, that's the boss. Uh oh, that's the boss. How you how you doing soon? So the Dart Moose. Okay, cool. You're officially a Canadian. Uh, we're gonna give you a Canadian stamp tonight. No, I'm glad you're here. Andy Wong coming in from Hong Kong. We got Charles. Who's this Charles guy? You guys will find out soon. We'll find out soon. We got Snowman Ken here. Who else we got in the house? We're on we're on YouTube, everybody, and we're also on Twitter. Uh, since Twitter's still doing live streaming <laughs> until the end of March here. Uh, Chris M. By the way, people that are in green there, uh, these are channel members. If you want to become a channel member, it's completely optional. Link is down below. Click the join button, different perks, things like that. Your chat will be highlighted, different badges, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, we got the man about tech. We all know and love him. He actually has his own sound bite here. Woo! Oh, my God. Goodness. He's right there. There he is, the man about tech, Viper. Uh, we got Aaron Martin. Who else we got here? Digital Slang. And I think that's it. We got 24 of you here. 24 of you between YouTube and uh, this thing we call uh, between YouTube and Twitter here. So anyway, want to get a couple housekeeping things out of the way. First of all, uh, thank you to the members and uh, everybody for being here tonight. Uh, just real quick, I want to disclose uh, tonight we're having a conversation. Tonight we're having a conversation with one of my favorite brands, Nomad. Some people call Nomad Goods. I think they had to adopt that because of naming what, who, whatever. Nomad. We call them Nomad. And we're going to talk about Nomad, the history. We're going to talk about some of their great products and things like that. First of all, this is not a sponsored by, stream by them or anything like that. We're doing this because I love Nomad. I'm a Nomad fan. Full disclosure, I first found Nomad in 2012 when they were doing a Kickstarter for one of their products. We're going to talk about that here. And then in 2013, I used to work for a cell phone accessories distributor up here called Cesium. And uh, during that time, we used to sell Nomad along with 40 other uh, brands and about uh, 50,000 SKUs. So I got to know the Nomad crew really well. Um, in fact, I went out one night with one of the owners. We're not going to say who. <clears throat> no. And we got Montreal, as, as they called. That's all we're going to say. That's all we're going to say. <laughs> so hopefully I don't get in trouble for that one. So I like to I like to think they are good friends. I like to think that uh, we have a good relationship. Um, I love their products not only because of the quality and because of the customer service, but because they can continue to elevate themselves. And for that reason, I hold them to a very high regard. So they don't automatically get a pass with Zach. Um, I've had some interesting emails back and forth with them and everything like that. But we're going to talk about that tonight. So with that out of the way, so you guys know the relationship here and how far back things go. Yes, there's an obvious bias here. I'm going to bring in the man right here. Let's see if I see if I can do this properly. There he is, Mr. Chuck from Nomad. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. How about yourself? Good. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear us all okay? I can hear you fantastically. I can't hear anybody else. I can hear the music. That's can good. Can you hear me? We can hear you. I think everybody right, can cool. hear you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's a count. Glad, glad you're here. So I've got a bunch of questions for you, Chuck. We're going to go through some of, uh, some of the products and stuff like that. Uh, but first of all, I know that your title is marketing director. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Marketing director. Yep. That can mean that can mean a whole different thing, whole bunch of different things. Why don't you just give it, give us a quick little little background on Chuck? You know how long you've been with Nomad, what you do at Nomad, and yep. let's go from there. Cool. So Nomad is about eight years old. They launched on Kickstarter way back when. Uh, I jumped into the company about six years ago, so I've been here for quite a while. Uh, I came in at a time where they needed people to help out with a bunch of stuff, so I kind of picked up a ton of different hats. Um, so from anything, I'm doing anything from influencer marketing to PR to email marketing to digital advertising, you know, Instagram, Facebook, AdWords, et cetera, uh, and everything in between, basically. <laughs> um, at this point, though, the company's grown quite a bit. So now I have a bunch of people help me out with all these different projects, but uh, all that kind of stuff, all that stuff kind of falls into my purview. And where is Nomad, so where is Nomad basically? I mean, I know you have people probably around the world, uh, but where's the headquarters? Where are you guys uh, headquartered? Yeah, so Nomad HQ is in Santa Barbara, California. It's about hour, hour and a half north of LA. Um, I'm actually down in San Diego myself, but the vast majority of the team is in Santa Barbara uh, proper. Santa, Santa Barbara, okay, perfect, yeah. perfect. So I should be, when everything's back to normal, I should be going down and staying with you guys and getting away from the snow. Yes, a thousand percent. Santa Barbara right now is probably 70 degrees and sunny and well, not right now, right now, but today it's probably 70 degrees and beautiful. So I don't know what the conversion is to, to, to Celsius because that's what we do up here oh, in, the rest of the world, <laughs> in the rest of the world. But today it was a balmy five degrees Celsius. So for my American friends that are in the chat, if you guys can convert that to let I us think know. A good way to convert it would be today was t-shirt and shorts weather in Santa Barbara. 
It would definitely be t-shirt and short day for, yeah. for Canadian. For, for Canadian. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now in San Diego, I was working in my yard. I was wearing a tank top and shorts and sweating the whole day. So oh, that's amazing. That's a little perspective. Like, I wish I was, I was shoveling snow and thinking you know, of questions asked, Chuck. You gotta get a snowblower. <laughs> I know. I actually I, I sold my last year. It was a terrible electric. Let me tell you this. I'd never buy an electric snowblower. This is no, terrible. You, just buy buy a gas one. Okay. Buy a gas uh, one and call it a day. I've that, I've been in the snow like a handful of times in my life, and that's one thing I know is you need a snowblower. I need, I'd love to get you up. You know what? We need to get you up here to go to Moraine Lake and all those fabulous places out in the Rockies. I know you've seen the photos and everything like that. So Yeah. I actually you know. I went to Lake Louise last February, so February twenty nineteen. Okay. And it was amazing up there. I, I went to Banff and Lake Louise um, and whatever. I forget the big main city right there that you fly into from Calgary. Yeah. That's where I am. Calgary, yeah. See, so well, hold on. You were here, but you didn't look me up? I, I spent all of like eight hours in Calgary to sleep and then <laughs> head up to Banff. Uh, okay. That's but fair. next time I get up there, it was an amazing trip. I really loved it. And it was, it was phenomenal. It was fair enough. Most beautiful. people fly to Calgary. They go to Banff anyway. That's, I mean, that's yeah. what I do on the weekend too. I just go west. All yeah. right. So Chuck, um, how big is Nomad now? Like, how big of a company is like in total total employees and whatnot? Uh, so we're depending on how you count and split the split the numbers. We're about thirty ish people, thirty third between twenty eight and thirty five people. Um, headquarters, like I said, Santa Barbara. We also have a branch over in Hong Kong, um, and then me in San Diego. I don't really count as a branch though. I'm just doing my thing down here. Okay. Um, yeah, we're about thirty people. It's it's a solid little core of people, and we all love the outdoors. We love consumer electronics. We love everything okay. we're doing here so it's, it's now, a great, great group now i know the entire nomad story like i know like yeah. basically the 2012 kickstarter yep. um i think you have the product behind you there uh, i got a few of them yeah i got yeah, like, so my little it, archive of stuff back there can you bring up the charge card and show yeah, people yeah, this? yeah yeah so let's let's show people this so this is the go ahead and describe what that is that was part of a 2012 kickstarter one of your very first kickstarters I yeah know. so our, our two co-founders noah and brian came up with this product it was called charge card they launched it on kickstarter back in 2012 and it's basically a credit card size and shaped USB cable for the old school, oops, sh sorry, 30 pin iPhone. Yeah. Like, I think it was iPhone 4. Um, they launched it back then. It went swimmingly. They learned a whole boatload about manufacturing as well as like order fulfillment and everything else in between. Um, and then they kind of branched out from there. And then you're holding uh, product number two in your hand right now. Yeah, this is product number two. So this actually came in lightning and also came in uh, micro. You guys remember this micro USB? <laughs> um, you guys never did. You would go USB type C because it just kind of grew beyond that. Yeah. Um, but I use this for the longest time. This is what did you guys call this? The key? Uh, so it was the first iteration of it was called the charge key. Yeah. Uh, and the one you have in your hand now is kind of like Gen 2 and that's called the, the Nomad key. And I loved it because it was flexible. It had this really good key ring on it. Yeah. Um, and that was your cable right there. So as long as you were carrying a battery with you or if you needed a, to connect your phone or whatever. A battery or honestly, like at the time we launched this product, I think it was 2013, 2014. Um, you can find a USB port anywhere, basically. Like you're in the airport, there's USB ports all over the place. Mm -hmm. You're in a restaurant or bar, the TV has a USB port on it. Uh, you, you get a cab more often than not. A lot of like the newer cars at that point had USB ports. Um, so like you didn't even need a battery pack. You just need the cable to, to act as your jumper, basically, to get your phone going again. Do the little um, bit of extra juice. Yeah, and it's, it's just it's simple things like that. Like when I remember when I was selling your guys's product, um, one of the problems that we had, I wouldn't say problems. One of the one of the things we try to push a lot. It's more uh, common now. Uh, we used to push a lot of uh, portable power, so mm -hmm. bat battery packs. Yep. But with a battery pack, you had to carry a cable, and I think that's what a lot of people didn't want to get them because you had to also carry a cable. But then yep. you guys came along with this little thing, and um, let me tell you, one plus two equals three, and you're stoked. I, I, my my commission paycheck was brilliant that month, so thank you for that. <laughs> we're, we're doing our best. Awesome. Now, I, I want to ask you if you could put it in a nutshell. Like, I know, uh, I know the Nomad story again, going back to 2012 and the mm -hmm. Kickstarter and how Brian and Noah uh, again, Brian and Noah are the the owners, the dudes. Okay, um, the man with the plan. The man, the man with the plan. Yeah. Can you give us just a quick summary, of, like what is Nomad, and and like so, if someone came up to you and said, Chuck, what is Nomad? Go. The the like the really easy like elevator pitch is Nomad is a consumer electronics accessory manufacturer for iPhone and Apple Watch. Um, we do wireless power, we do a bunch of really badass cables, but for the most part, we kind of focus on the Apple ecosystem. The, the more fun pitch, if you will, is the Nomad is a brand that loves the outdoors and adventure and getting out there and exploring. And we design products for the everyday Nomad. Um, yeah. pre COVID, it was a little bit easier for people to travel and do nomadic work. Uh, if you will, uh, it's changed a bit now, of course, but we have a lot of awesome accessories for people who are trying to set up base stations of 
for, for work basically in their home office or away office or whatever it may be in between. Uh, and we, we try to support them with everything we can, be it iPhone cases, really strong, awesome cables, wireless charging stations, et cetera. Perfect. Perfect. Now you guys primarily focus on Apple products. Now I know because I've reviewed a, a lot of your products in the past, mm -hmm. I've done, I've done, I've done cables. I've done your power station things. We're going to get into this. Uh, we're going to get into specifics, by the way. Okay. Um, but one common question that we as creators, the people that do stuff on YouTube mm -hmm. or on Twitter, or whatever, we always get this question because people, you know, we, they see us presenting or reviewing your products. They always ask us this. How come Nomad doesn't make a case for this phone? How come they don't make a case for this phone? How come it's always Apple stuff? So can you expand on that? I mean, I know what the answer is, but let's hear from... Let's hear yeah, from Nomad. I mean, the short answer is it's just hard to adopt products of the Android ecosystem given how many different form factors there are. Um, you know, to be honest, I'm an iPhone guy, so I don't know yep. all the different Samsung and Google and everybody else in between phones. Mm -hmm. But there's just a myriad of different options available out there that it, it makes it tough for a smaller company to provide accessories for. So is it, um, fair to, is it fair to say that you guys look at primarily the North American market and like what is selling basically? And for the most part, let's be honest, it's it's iPhones, right? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the North American market is our core competency, but we're, I mean, we're definitely focused on the rest of the world as well. And iPhone mm -hmm. or Apple is making huge inroads in Southeast Asia and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, now, now, you guys have done uh, previous partnerships with uh, with Google, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we're part of the Made for Google program. So you're so with done. the, so for example, so for future uh, Google products, we can we can still uh, expect to see that kind of stuff from you guys? Yeah, likewise. Yeah, okay. absolutely. So. Okay, perfect. So, but, but for example, with Samsung, as an example, we're just, we're just going to pick on Samsung. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I mean, like you said, Samsung releases, I mean, along with their Galaxy lines, they got the, you know, got the A lines, the J lines, et cetera, right? And then mm -hmm. you look at other companies like uh, the Xiaomi's and, you know, the LG's and everything like that. They're releasing devices mm -hmm. every single month, right? So, yeah. and then uh, I think we've gone, I've gone over this several times in a lot of my streams. If you go into any major carrier store, an AT&T, a Verizon, a Bell, a Rogers, a Telus, those are the three up here. Uh, an at t you walk in there, they're selling iPhones, right? People are coming in for iPhones and that's what they're mm -hmm. walking out with. So I think, I mean, that's a good choice, but I also really like how you guys have, you know, and you're making USB-C to, to lightning, you're making USB-C to USB-A, you know, you're, you have Android stuff, not necessarily cases, right? Yeah. We're trying to make products that can be catch all products for everybody. So like, you know, most of our, most households at this point are multi-device households, be it a Samsung phone, an iPhone phone, plus also maybe a Nintendo Wii or something like that. So like, mm -hmm. if you get one cable that can service all these different devices, mm -hmm. you know, why not do it? And that, that's kind of our ethos is let's, let's take care of everybody in the household with one, one easy cable. Perfect. Now I want to, I want to backtrack a little bit, uh, to almost a year ago, I'm going to say late January, February, I think is when you guys started doing this. Um, Global pandemic is obviously out there. Oh, okay. <laughs> then, I thought you were going to CES. Yeah, no, no. We're, we'll, we'll talk about CES in a little bit. I mean, it's almost <laughs> been a year since we hung out and everything like that. By the way, oh, yeah. you guys threw a good party. Um, sure. Can you talk about uh, Nomad's efforts and what you guys have done uh, during the pandemic to help uh, in terms of uh, product offerings or, or on the front lines and whatnot? Yeah. So, you know, pandemic crisis really hit the U.S. back in like end of February, early March. Um, a lot of companies and people were just generally kind of concerned about what was going to happen. Um, the biggest concern, of course, like in the, in the immediate future was like, it was, was PPE, uh, protective equipment for like uh, first responders and stuff. Yeah. Uh, there's a major shortage of it in the US. Our factory partners over in China had excess uh, capability and they said, hey guys, like, let's partner together and make this happen and get those, this PPE to the US. So we partnered up with those guys and we started rocking and rolling. Um, it basically was a week long product launch for us. We, we got together on like a Wednesday mm -hmm. and said, Hey, let's make this happen. By Wednesday, the following week, we had a, the products up on the site and we're shipping and ready to go. Uh, we really leveraged our strong partnerships with FedEx and other international carriers to get product from the, from China to the U S and that was a, a major roadblock for a lot of people. They couldn't get stuff over sent overseas fast enough to, to service the North American needs. Okay. Well, bro, um, I mean, I wish I had an applause button, uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you, I'll give Nomad one of these. All right. All right. All right. All right. There you go. That's perfect. Uh, so we do appreciate it. I, mean, I know as I was yeah. going through the website the last couple of days here, and uh, I mean, for example, if you go under shop um, or under, you guys actually have a, a heading right there at the top, yeah. medical supplies. So KN95 yeah. masks, vinyl gloves, hand sanitizer. So that is, the, that, that's awesome. The cool thing we're doing with all this too, is we're selling it at cost. Basically, we're just trying to get equipment out to people who need it. Um, at this point, like when we first launched, it was only for first responders and like frontline personnel. At this point, it's anybody who needs it or wants it. They can get it from us. 
we're actively trying to make sure we're, we're providing it at the lowest cost possible, be it, like you said, masks or gloves or uh, hand sanitizer. A really cool uh, thing that just happened, actually, uh, for those of you in the US is we got an EUA, uh, an emergency youth authorization from the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, okay. uh, certifying our three-ply masks as FDA certified. There's like 15 companies in the US that have this EUA at this point that weren't already selling masks before. So like 3M, those guys, they were already all certified. That's For us that's... to get this authorization is really exciting and cool for us to be able to say, okay, like, yes, we're providing masks, but they're also FDA certified. They're not some random fly-by-night operation. This is Nomad selling high quality stuff. That's huge. And yeah. uh, I think that really speaks to uh, how grassroots you guys still are and whatnot. And uh, I mean, again, thank you for for the effort. Like you said, you guys are doing this basically a cost or they just make sure mm -hmm. things get out there. So yeah. uh, thank you again. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to shift here and we're going to get into, we're going to get into this because I saw a, a, a big, huge jump in, in, no, in the interest of Nomad when this happened. Now, do you remember uh, earlier last year, I think it was about the middle of last year, Apple canceled air power. Yep. Apple canceled air power. And it seemed to really kind of uh, coincide along with uh, what you guys were releasing at the time, yeah. uh, which was. I was looking to see if I had one behind me. Oh, let's see if you have one behind you. But actually, I'm going to bring yeah. up the screen here on your guys' web website. The Base Station Pro. Yeah. Which I think the majority of people watching this will know what this is. Um, but why don't you go through what the base station pro is? I'll, I'll slowly scroll through here and how this basically was your solution, Nomad solution for air power. What didn't happen with air power? Yeah. So base station pro is basically a partnership product between Nomad and another company called era with their technology called free power. Um, it's a free positional wireless charger. It's got 18 coils built into it, the surface of it. And they're actually like rather than having a bunch of copper coils like a traditional wireless charger would have stacked mm -hmm. on top of each other, it's 18 coils all in one circuit board together. Um, okay. I'm not the engineer, so <laughs> forgive me if my technical explanations don't. No, that's okay. I mean, we talk, we, we don't use a lot of lingo around here, so go right, ahead. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyhow, what, it, what I'm getting at here is it allows us to make a really sleek, modern wireless charger that allows for free positional charging, where you can throw your phone on there, you can throw your AirPods on there. Wherever it ends up on the pad, you're going to get a charge. Um, I have your, a... I have your first generation uh, base station upstairs. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, uh, it's a really, it's really. I like again. I like how, like how clean it is. Like here it is, right? Yeah. Right. There's no, you know, it blends in well. So, you know, when we come in, uh, the, if we're out and about, or, yeah, exactly. You got the wood grain one. Yeah. Still waiting for that one. And uh, I'm just. <laughs> I like how it, it. I like how it blends in really well. I can throw my iPhone on there. My wife can throw her Galaxy S10e. Um, I got my Android here as well, uh, because you got you can either go lengthwise mm -hmm. or you can go one, two, three on the original base station. But with this mm -hmm. one, with the Pro, you can literally put it anywhere, right? Yeah, which is like ideal for people like me. Like I'm a light sleeper. I you know I'll fall asleep at ten o'clock. I'll wake up mm -hmm. at eleven. I'll wake up again at like two. Check my phone. I just throw it back down again. I don't have to worry about it. Like in the in the past with the traditional Qi charger, you have to make sure it's perfectly aligned or plug it in. Um, to make sure you're getting charged with this type of solution. You just throw your phone down and don't have to worry about it. So here's a look at some of the technology from Eric, like yeah. you said here with the different coils and mm -hmm. how you guys have them intersecting. Now, um, I know I think it's okay to ask you about this because mm -hmm. this was originally supposed to be released, not when it was released, but obviously before that. And it came back down to what you guys really take a lot of pride in, which is your quality, mm -hmm. right? Can yeah. you speak Can you speak a little bit about that, about the process and, and yeah. why, why it was really important that you guys just don't half-ass this, let's just call it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, anytime you're introducing a new tech to the market, there's there's gonna be road bumps. There's gonna be speed bumps along the way. And this is no no different than anything else. Um, and rather than launch a half-ass product, as you said, mm -hmm. we just elected to kind of delay things and make sure we really polished out all the details and made, it, made sure it was an awesome product ready to go. Okay, perfect. I mean, uh, I know that uh, when, when because I knew what the date was that was bugging you and you're like, hey, we'll we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and actually, I think it was uh, again, we'll talk about CES here. You yeah. and I talked about this at CES and you just said yeah. I remember we were we were at your party. Um, mm -hmm. I was I was eating all your food and uh, you're like, you're like, hey, Zach, we actually have to put a delay on this because it just it's just not working out right. We're getting a bit of it. We're getting a we're getting a 10 watt charge over here and an eight watt charge over here. And because it comes with a USB type C, it is a fast mm -hmm. it is a fast wireless charge. Let's point that out as well. Yeah, so, the USB-C, and actually the, the coolest thing about USB-C in for us 
is the fact that we can update firmware. Mm -hmm. um, no other wireless charger on the market can do that. So they basically get a pre-programmed standardized circuit board, and that's what it is. You get it, and that's that's it for the rest of the day, or for the rest of the year, whatever. Mm -hmm. With Base Station Pro, we can push firmware updates whenever we want. So we're constantly working with our team over at Era, or our partners over at Era, to refine the firmware and uh, you know accommodate for new products as they launch, new wireless phones or AirPods or whatever it may be, to update the product to accommodate for whatever uh, nuances they may have with wireless charging. Excuse me, I'm just grabbing. Uh, You're grabbing all the all the, all the I'm, fun I'm grabbing stuff the ahead. next couple of things I want to talk about. That's cool. Uh, I'm for it. So, so I'm going to switch over to uh, to the um, to our, our face down camera here, mm -hmm. and uh, let's go ahead and switch that over. And uh, oh, let's go ahead. And oh, switch. hey, actually, real quick, let's jump in real fast. We got a couple of comments here. Oh, uh, Viper says he might know a thing or two about Nomad or about the Apple ecosystem. I think you do, sir. <laughs> El Jefe, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Yeah. Jonathan asked, is asking when the Apple Watch adapter is going to be shipped for the Base Station Pro. It's a great question, uh, Jonathan. Okay. We actually hit a little bit of a production hiccup with uh, COVID fun. Uh, but we, we're supposed to be finishing up production at the beginning of this month. So hopefully in the next week or so, at which point we'll be shipping in mid to late January. So you should see yours relatively soon. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Sorry. Now, I want to ask you about this. I'm going to hopefully I can bring up, hopefully I can click the right button. There we go. There we go. Uh, one of the staples in your guys's product now i don't the funny thing is i don't have this here it's upstairs in my in my <laughs> in mm -hmm. my in my in my bedroom there it actually has my passport uh one of the things you guys are known for actually i think i could pop i should have mine right here too do you have yours there okay here we go yeah. here's the rugged case so this is the rugged case made of horween leather yep now let me ask you this why horween leather I mean, why not? It's the greatest leather company in the United States. They're fourth or fifth generation. They're based out of Chicago. They're making the leather for the NFL, the NBA, Wilson for like baseball gloves, uh, golf gloves, etc. They're just a, a, an old school leather tannery based in the US just doing a really fantastic product that just makes sense to use. Like there's no reason not, or there's no reason to use something else when we have such a fantastic product available to us. And I really like how you guys take the attention to detail, like the soft inside here, the precise buttons, mm -hmm. the cutouts. It's it's still very minimal. Yeah. Uh, you do have that drop protection. You guys did make oversized cutouts for third party, specifically yep. your cables, which we'll yep. get into. Do you have one of the iPhone 12 cases with you? Uh, this is I the have. iPhone 12. All right. So no, the cool sorry, thing about, sorry, sorry, this is not, sorry, this is sorry, this is the 11 Pro Max. Sorry, yeah. I don't have the 12 cases we are working right. right now. So the 12 cases. The other thing we added this year is like an internal bumper that adds even more drop protection for whatever you're doing. Okay. Um, it, it, it looks simple. It looks like a, a nothing detail, but it's one of those things that actually took a bit of time to perfect Okay. and it's been amazing to have. So like we've, we've upped our drop protection from like, I think six foot before to 10 foot. And honestly, like it's, it's probably better beyond 10 feet. It, and it's a really nice addition to the product. Are you guys doing those drop tests internally or are you guys using a third party? We're doing them internally. Our factory partners have like all kinds of really cool testing facilities. I wish I had like footage available readily. Mm -hmm. But they have machines that'll take your Apple Watch drop and bend it ten thousand times. Wow! Just to see if it's going to break or twist it ten thousand times, etc. And the same thing with the cables and same thing with everything else. It's it's really neat to have them testing now, all kind of stuff for us. Now speaking of the stick, I'm just going to I'm going to I'm just trying to tick off my questions here that no, I have for you because I got a whole bunch here. Uh, let's take a look here. We're done with that. Uh, speaking of, actually, we'll we'll continue that because like, you you see you you mentioned watch straps. Yeah. One of my favorite products yeah. from you guys. I wear this all the time. Now, you guys recently sent me this. We'll talk about this in a second. But I have it on right now. This is your titanium band. Titanium band, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to take this off for the Apple Watch. And I just love the look. Hopefully, you guys can see that. You see that very minimal Nomad mm -hmm. engraving there. You guys have the clasp here. You know what's also nice is you guys also included the the tool basically to yep. take out the links so yeah. i thought that was a very nice touch was, was there was that was that on purpose or was that just something like you thought no, abso you know, absolutely on purpose i used to work right. at a skate shop um <laughs> like post-college i was selling skateboards selling watches and sunglasses and stuff like that and we sold a bunch of watches from like a high-end surf industry watch company that everyone loved and they'd make high quality stuff but they had metal bands that all required custom uh adjustments which meant people had to come back to us in the shop to get it adjusted, or they'd have to go to a watch shop and pay a watch guy 20 bucks to do it. 
So for us, it's like, well, why, why put that burden on the consumer? Let's provide them with a tool to, to make those adjustments themselves. And it's fairly easy too. You just put it in there and you kind of screw, I don't have it. Here. Yeah, yeah, you just pop out the pin and make adjustments and you're good to go. It's, now you guys it's just cool. announced this one here. Let's talk about this right here. Yeah. Um, I've worn this a couple of times, but I, I, mean, I mean, I'm going to be selfish and I'm just going to tell you, I keep on going back to the titanium one, <laughs> but this is your new sports strap. Sports strap yeah. Can you tell us any information about this one here and and you know the reasoning behind uh, maybe some of the things that we see on here? Yeah, it's, it, this one's been a long time in the coming, to be honest. I think we were like prototyping early versions of it at CES last year and just launched it, what, like a month ago at this point? Mm -hmm. um, so new versions got, it's got a little bit different material in the actual strap itself. It lends to a, a much more comfortable fit. The, the channeling is providing for a little bit of airflow underneath. Um, I think a big complaint a lot of people have with like the standard silicone strap from Apple and, and the like is the fact that you get really sweaty underneath and it just yeah, I have stays the, kind of sloppy. I have one of their, yeah, the Nike sports strap and I yeah. like it, it's comfortable, but it, it like you said, it does get sweaty. This does yeah. not, this does exactly. not. Exactly. And this one we've been working on for a long time. We're really happy with how it turned out. The extra large lug adds to a little bit of more security with what you're this, doing. This does not come off, yeah. No, yeah, we've, yeah, we've had guys, for those of you that are surfers, if anybody in here is, um, we've had guys surfing with this strap at Jaws and Mavericks and Nazarene, and they're all super fired up with the product and, and how it's performing for them. Very nice addition that you guys have Thank done you. here. Very nice addition. Uh, I'm gonna go through the chat here real quick to see if we're, we're gonna switch up the cameras here real quick and then go back mm -hmm. to the chat. Again, uh, if you're in the chat here, if you're, in, if you're in the live chat and you have questions for Nomad, go ahead and ask them. Super chats are obviously gonna be taken first here and whatnot. Um, yeah, there we go. Sports chat, uh, sports, <laughs> Apple Watch support, baby. El Hefe. I would I would say it's safe to say that El Hefe reviews, good friend of the channel, good friend of mine. Uh, good friend of mine, a, is, good is dude. A, exactly, he's a good friend of ours, yes. Uh, that uh, he's a fan of Nomad, absolutely. Yes, the cases are fire. I swear, I think Viper just has that button like per, 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 permanently binded because whenever I see him in a chat, he's always <laughs> he's it's like always, a shortcut. He's always there with control the fire. F, control F. Always there, yeah. Um, <laughs> Chris Evans says definitely getting one of those. They look really, really nice. Um, is it possible? So, a question here from Andy Wong: Is it possible to have yeah. Nomad leather case but not rugged? So, I think what Andy's talking about is maybe something that's maybe a little thinner, uh, but it's not as yeah, it sounds like Andy's what, probably looking it, for like the Apple Watch or the Apple version of a leather case. And yeah, 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 it's possible. It just doesn't fit with our design ethos. Like we're we're at adventures, we're outdoors, we're on the go. We like to look and feel leather, but at the same time, we also want something that's going to protect our case or our phone. Mm -hmm. um, and those lower profile, slimmer uh, leather cases don't offer as much protection. Okay, so again, I got, that kind of follows up with Viper's question here. Chuck, any chance nobody will make a braided loop for the Apple Watch? maybe we're experimenting with all kinds of things all the time so who knows what 2021 has in store for us okay okay so uh we've got a good friend in the chat here technically speaking mr scott peachy how are you doing hey, hey what's up scott there's it's a lot of familiar faces here uh genos just has oh actually a question here from uh, latrell here is there any uh, plans for galaxy phones and tabs instead of just iphones and pixels this kind of goes back to the question before i don't i don't think it's in the pipeline is it chuck not to my knowledge the product guys are always kind of working on stuff on the back burner and not telling me what's going on until it's about ready to go so maybe something's going to happen down the road but as far as i know not not in the immediate future and i guess that kind of goes also for the galaxy watch traps as well right yeah exactly okay okay magsafe uh, stand by oh yeah that's good that's, that's so that's, that, that's there's a follow-up question there yeah any plans for magsafe no 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 and, we'll see okay. <laughs> we know we all know anyway <laughs> all right let's let's talk about um I don't want to. I don't want to pull it out yet. I want to. That's what she said. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to bring this out yet. But we're. Uh, let's talk about your guys's cable. It's a. It's a. Hey, Chuck, calm down. It's a. It's a. It's a family show. Uh, <laughs> let me grab the next thing here. We're going to talk about your guys's cables here. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, I like this one. I, I need another one of these because uh, someone stole it from me. Uh, <laughs> that's not a true friend then. I know. I, I'm. I'm really. See, here's the thing. When you when you do accessory uh, uh, sales and then you move to doing like reviews like this, your friends yeah. and family still come to you and steal your stuff, right? So, yep. uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to the uh, the top down shot here, okay. and uh, we'll we'll embiggen everything here. Uh, let's go ahead. And, let's go ahead and do this right. Nope, that's the wrong one. I think I need to move me over there. There we go. And then we'll do that. There we go. Uh, you got a universal cable. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Uh, where is it? This cable right here 
This is all I traveled with uh, last November. So like a year, over a year ago when I went to Mexico. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, we got, it's a three in one. So you've got lightning, micro, and USB type C, then going to USB A. This is brilliant right here. This is probably one of your biggest sellers when it comes to cables, correct? Honestly, I haven't looked at the sales data in a while, but I would assume so. <laughs> yeah, Based so on my own personal much. preferences, similar to yours, that's definitely yeah. my favorite cable. I used to sell a ton of these when I was with the, the distributor or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I do want to talk about, because there's there's a commonality with all your cables here. So we got mm-hmm. this, and then here's one of your classics right here. We got USB Type-C. Uh, there it is, USB Type-C right there to mm-hmm. Lightning. Yep. Why did Nomad go with Kevlar? Can you tell us again any sort of design choices or whatnot? I'm going to give some close-up stuff. I'm going to say, similar to Horween, why not go with Kevlar? Um, like I said, our design ethos is such that we want to have products that are the best in market, best in class, and are, are designed to last. We don't want, to, yes, we're charging $30 for a cable. We want a cable that's going to last you a long time. Uh, you know, we don't want your cat to destroy it. We don't want you to suck it up in the vacuum and destroy it. We want it to be there ready for you when you need it, um, whatever your adventure may be. If that's going to soccer practice, if that's going to school, or if that's going to Mexico or anywhere in between. Now, you guys have done a, a lot of uh, a lot of bend tests and things like that with these products. Can you yeah. talk about the testing that's involved? Because I know that you guys did some things like, I think you guys like towed a truck or something like that. With these cables. <laughs> yeah, before we the, yeah, before we launched the Kevlar cables, we had a lot of fun testing them out uh, in various ways. Uh, we did a little video you can find on our YouTube channel, at Nomad Goods. Um, but this did like a bunch of like funny things like towing a truck, towing a skateboarder, doing pull-ups with the cables and all that kind of stuff. But we also did like more scientific testing, if you will, again, with our factory partners where they were doing bend tests and, and really putting them through the rigors, you know, tens of thousands of times to see how long they're going to hold up. I got to tell you this edition right here, the built in like, more strap. people, more, <laughs> this needs to be a staple on more cables out there. And I'm yeah. glad that you guys, I'm glad that you guys do do this more than just, uh, more than just like a piece of like a Velcro. For yeah, no, this, this thing is, I, I didn't know the design team was doing this, to be honest. And when it came out, I was so stoked to see it. Um, it's not one of those things I ever thought about having on the cable, but having it fully integrated like that, yeah. rubberized as it is, you don't have the Velcro like degrading everything else around it. it yeah, I'm really happy with those two. Thank you for the kind words on that. Yeah, just, just, the, just the little things like this. And I've always talked about this in a lot of my unboxings and everything. I really love, I mean, oh, let's be honest. I mean, you guys have your products represented on a retail level and obviously online. So on a retail level, packaging is a, is a big thing. You guys do a terrific job, even from day one. I still have some of your old white, <laughs> some of your old white packaging. Oh, the old white bo- do you have some of the old yeah. white, some of the I old don't white have boxes? I there? just retired it to the garage, actually. I yeah. had okay. some here. But you guys went from <laughs> that to like a black to this gray, I think. I think yeah. this is your most recent. And uh, I really like, I mean, for example, I mean, this is going to seem silly to some people, but I really like this whole magnetic closure here and it just it really kind of speaks to the quality and the care and the attention to detail that you guys go into uh on the inside here you know there's a story here you're gonna find out about the cable warranties things like that uh again what's supported with the cable in terms of strength in terms of data transfers things like that a cool thing we're doing this year too is we're actually releasing a new version of uh, uh packaging that's going to be a little bit more environmentally friendly we're, we're continuing to try and iterate upon what we have here it's going to have a refined look but also be more environmentally friendly or as environmentally friendly as we can um so you're going to see some new stuff coming out later this year that's going to be even better than what you have in your hand right now now this is the one chuck that is empty okay so uh-huh. we'll, we'll talk about this after um maybe you can send me another one i yeah. love i love this again we were talking about cables before and about you know with the key here how mm-hmm. you know it was a pain for people to carry along a block and a long cable and now they could just carry something small like this mm-hmm. you guys integrated it all into one right here can you uh is there a story behind this or how the battery cable came about uh, it honestly it probably involved a lot of beer or wine in a late <laughs> night or two um i feel like some of our more crazy products involve a lot of alcohol that's awesome. that <laughs> uh, is, that but yeah battery crazy. cable like i think we came up with that when we were back in like our small, small Santa Barbara office, there's maybe seven or eight people in the company at a time. Mm-hmm. And we're like, well, what if you like had a battery pack and your cable together in one and you could charge and you could like, maybe your phone's halfway charged, you can pl- unplug it and take the battery cable with you and and be on the go. And it's, it's it was a, a fun little product to bring to fruition for sure. It's interesting you mentioned, uh, you, you, you mentioned the alcohol aspect. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I left this in Mexico with the bartender because I there really like, because he took really good care of me. Yeah. <laughs> they don't no, I mean, like it's, it's fun to spitball with the boys or with the crew and have a, you know, and just come up with crazy product ideas and you never know what's going to be a success until you actually start chasing down 
the the actual design eth ethos behind it and see what happens. And this is one of those products that worked out really well. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's go back to the chat here. Let's see if there's any more uh any more questions right now. We got uh we got Renee Richie in the house. Renee oh, what's Ritchie. up, Renee? Yes, we love Renee. Everybody loves Renee. He's just this dude is just growing like crazy. Uh Jermaine King, definitely need a cable like that. Base Station Pro looks an looks like an amazing wireless charger. Absolutely does. I mean, I like I had the base station here. I also have what's that small one? Uh the stand. The the, the round or one. Or the round one. We're not making yeah. that one anymore. That was the yeah. base station. I don't remember what we called it, to be honest. Um, it, was, it was a hub. It was called the, it hub. Was the hub. Yeah, that was our first iteration yeah. of a wireless charging. And it was yeah. basically, you had a wireless coil in the center of it. Mm -hmm. And then you yeah. also had five extra USB ports or four extra USB ports underneath it. So you could charge one device wirelessly. And this is like right when Apple started adding wireless charging to their iPhones. But then also charge any of your peripheries off of it. It was a nice little solution for desktop charging. It's. Uh, I still have mine up here. It's not plugged in. But again, I have charges all over the place. That's cool. Um, I was going to say what uh, the next in terms of actually I can show it. We can actually show it right here because it's actually on the other camera here. This is your latest uh, charger here right here. This is the base station stand. The stand is awesome. It's my yeah. Favorite. So this this is I mean, this is more than just a well, as you can see here, stand. OK, so let's let's go through this right here. First of all, you guys got this nice soft. This is leather, is it not? Or is this a faux? It is a leather surface. Yes. OK, I got mine here, too, because I was just uh -huh. trying to on it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys went USB Type C. You guys believe in the whole USB C. You know, yeah, all, USB C all is going to be the future for sure. Yeah, and it's it's got a nice weight to it. Like it's not flimsy. You guys yeah, have some we, nice rubberized bottom here. And the cool thing too about it is it's got two coils in there, so you mm -hmm. can stand your phone up vertically as you had it before, or you can flip it horizontal. Uh, so if you want to watch TV in bed or whatever, maybe you can flip your phone horizontal, still be charging, and yeah, enjoy the the charging experience. So there's or, my note, there's my Note 10 Plus, and there we go. Yeah. Now I'm going into a regular charger right here, but it, it does support fast wireless. I'm going into a regular one right now, but if we go yeah, like I think this, it, I think it tops out at like 15 this. watts. I forget. And exactly. also like this. Yeah. So that's or AirPods brilliant. for that matter, whatever you need. Yeah, I was going to say, so you guys made it. So there's basically three coils, one, two, and three, correct? Just two. Oh, the just the two. Two? Okay, yeah. But they're, they're semi overlapping. So you can put, like you said, the smaller AirPods. Exactly. That, right? Okay. Yep. Brilliant. And also again, attention to detail. Um, the we got the cable here again with the branding it's a you know, again one of your strong a kevlar type you know nylon cable that one not. i think i think the one we ship with our chargers isn't kevlar but it's still i think an over engineered it's a nice yeah cable. it's it's definitely i mean it's not like a regular <clears throat> flimsy tpu type cable right i don't no, think definitely don't not. Think, that's definitely not in your guys's language there no <laughs> okay so let's get to this I think a lot of people were kind of surprised. I wouldn't say surprised at this, but this is this is getting a lot of attention. Okay. Laptop sleeves. Lap laptop sleeves. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about all right. This right here, ladies and gentlemen, is a laptop sleeve. Now, nothing against Apple or anything. This is the Apple OEM laptop sleeve. Okay. So I mean it's just a, it's just a leather sleeve. It's a couple pieces of leather sewn together. Yeah. It's nice. kind of a phoned in product, to be honest. It's nice. I mean, it's got the Apple logo. If you're, you know, if you're that person, whatever, where you go. So this is a sleeve, like it could bend, right? <laughs> when Nomad did a sleeve, they did this guy right here. Look at this thing right here. This is brilliant. So why don't you uh, talk about this right here? And I'm going to do my best to show this off as, yeah, well, as well as I can it, here. It's one of those products that's really hard to, to show visually until you have it in your hands, but it's, it's, Sleeve is not a good term for this product. It's more of a clamshell. So it's got compression molded, uh, I think EVA, I forget exactly what the material is. Can you guys hear so that? It's saying hello to you. It's yeah. like, what's that? What's that? Uh, oh man, never mind. I'm not going to get on the path. <laughs> go, ahead, go, ahead and describe um, the, go ahead and describe this part before you talk so, about the molding. So that part right there is we have magnets running along the whole lip of the product all the way from left to right um, that, that hold it shut basically. So once you throw your phone in, or your, your, <laughs> or your MacBook in there, it's going to stay shut. You don't have to worry about dropping in it, slipping out. You don't have to worry about holding it upside down and like slipping out and falling on the ground like you do with most They're of these. They're really strong, dude. Like it takes a little bit to open this. Like, yeah, this is a product we actually didn't show people at CES last year, but we were working on it at that point. Um, <laughs> it's taken a lot of iteration and a lot of like design refinement to get it where it is today. Um, and I, I couldn't be more happy with how it turned out, to be honest. I was, uh, I was really, really excited when I saw this. And I'm going to do my best to show this. We got the wide angle here. So... Another neat little feature you guys did here is this little cutout here. Can you explain what this is? Nope. Oh, 
Chuck, I think we lost you. My bad. Sorry. Oh, there we go. There, there we go. are. Um, so it's a little cutout, so you can keep your uh, device charged via USB-C. Um, so USB-C into there, right? USB-C in. I wouldn't yeah. leave your computer sitting there and then hook it up to your monitor and use it as like a dock per se. Mm -hmm. But if you need to like throw some juice in your computer, you're good to go. You don't have to pull it out of the sleeve. You can just charge it up and you're, you're off and running. And again, you guys did uh, minimal Super branding. Subtle. Yep. Yeah. You guys are all about the minimal. Like it's not like huge letters everywhere and everything like that, right? No, we don't. We don't need a plaster name everywhere. Like we think our products take, to speak for themselves. So subtle branding is a nice little touch. So this cutout is just on the one side. If people are wondering, so here we have the top with the magnets. Your laptop goes in here. Now I would demonstrate this to everybody, but I'm actually running off my laptop right now. Uh, but yeah, you have this right here, and then mm -hmm. uh, opens up at the top here, and then when you go over to the other side, again it's just it's regular squared off. Right. So yeah. the nice thing about this now, uh, everybody, I'm going to go ahead and switch this camera up. Uh, you guys currently have this listed on your website as working as uh, for 13 inch and um, 16 inch MacBook yeah. Pros, uh, as in like the new ones, like 20, 20, 21, 21. Mm -hmm. I want to let everybody know now if you have an older MacBook, this should fit. Mm -hmm. I'm, on a, I'm, on, I'm on a 2017 MacBook Pro. 15 inch mm -hmm. and this fits perfectly yeah. there is some room but it does not move around freely like it you can feel the room inside but it doesn't move around like i, sh I did a shake test with this and it did not move around so if you have an older macbook mm -hmm. you should be good to go you should be good to go and because and newer, of that clamshell and the newer 13 inch macbooks fit as well the uh the m1s but i just think and by the way i mean yeah. I, I can't get enough of yeah. a I'm Again, sorry, going but... back to your question of why horror and leather, yeah. there you go. Yeah, it's it's mean, hard to convey that over the internet, of course. But I'm sorry, vegans, but you're missing out. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway, beautiful. And you guys also have this. You guys have, have this in the brown and also in, in black, right? Is it in brown right now? Yeah. And black's coming down the road. Black's but, coming down the road. But yeah, but brown at this point is uh, the only one available. It's kind of funny because I'm thinking of trading in my MacBook Pro for a Mac Mini, and then you guys pull this. So Sorry. it's like, <laughs> what do I do, right? Yeah. What do I do? But that's going to bring me to the next thing here. I love this. I absolutely, so I love my iPad. It's mm -hmm. a glorified movie water, uh, watcher and whatnot. Uh -huh. um, but you guys just make it so much nicer. So this is your iPad Pro case, rugged, yeah. rugged, rugged case. Now I have, yeah. a 20, I have a 2018. I'm going to show you guys this with the other camera as well. Go ahead and switch this up. Now this right here is again you guys market this for the uh 2020 versions of the ipad mm -hmm. pro but i have a 2018 as you guys can see the only difference is that camera module in the back and it does fit perfectly and look how it protects the camera so see that right there yeah nice little gap on there and again you guys can you can still fit the pin on there so you still have access to your real volume buttons and mm -hmm. that, it's one of your buttons here at the top mm -hmm. and then everything else is accessible and of course you know you can still fold this out stand her up let me bring it around here it, it looks like i have space here but i don't <laughs> yeah no you're, you're good but, but um, uh, no it's it's we're, we're trying to round out our product or apple product uh, lineup and i think this is like a nice step in that di direction um adding the magnets is actually a complicated task that everyone kind of mm -hmm. thinks is really easy but yeah I mean, nice is, is tough but it, this is uh, this is uh, uh, very much like fun. very much like the oem um I know that when I do have the iPad on, it does recognize as soon as I open this and close it, yep. everything like that. Um, but again, a nice touch with the whole, I mean, you have, you do have the bumper protection, but then I can still put yeah. my pencil on there. So I'm glad exactly. you guys, I'm glad you guys didn't do like a, like a sleeve type thing. I'm glad you guys actually use the actual. Mask. I was just going to say like, should we, should we make like a little leather sleeve similar well, to like the ones you had as a kid, like the, the rubber things on your pencils at school? Well, here's the thing. If you do that, I don't, the pencil can't. Oh can't, yeah, uh, might, can't reach, can't recharge, right? And it won't be yeah. able to pair up, right? Yeah. Um, I like this. I mean, again, minimal, very simple. Now, I want you to talk about how Horween leather ages. While I get out the next piece here, and but I mean, again, why you guys kind yeah. of again went, went with it? Like, why? I mean, for example, people might look at this and go, "Oh, you have a you have a scratch here." Well, there's a reason for that. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I have a brand new product here that I can use as like a before and after type thing. Um, so the cool thing about Horween leather is everything that we're using from them is vegetable tan, which means it's not like over refined. It's not chemically processed a ton. It's not coated with a bunch of stuff. Like you, you buy a, a purse or a wallet or a belt at any or most major retailers at the mall, it's going to be 
extremely it's, it's almost a synthetic leather at that point because of all the refinements they do to it versus the stuff we have is it's all very pure this is our natural leather case for the nice. airpods pro so this that's is a brand new one out of the box nice. um but over time what happens like this isn't apples to apples because this is the the brown version of it mm -hmm. but it it it, it absorbs the oils from your hand, the oils from your pockets. If you're using a phone, the oils from the side of your face and it get, just develops this really nice rugged patina and it's going to allow for like the scratches or imperfections to occur, but then also buff them out essentially over time. So it gives you a, a, a case or a product that's uniquely yours, um, no matter what you're doing. Um, and it, it just it gives it a really nice look and feel that you can't get with like traditionally, not traditionally, more modernly refined leathers. But stuff like I said, you find it like the bigger, bigger retailers. So someone, someone popped, uh, someone uh, commented up here. Mm -hmm. uh, Latrell was talking about the black. I think he was talking about the uh, the black MacBook Pro, the mm -hmm. the, the sleeve. Mm -hmm. um, you sent me this along with the sample. This, I mean, this is oh, yeah. this this is your mouse pad. This is your thirteen yep. inch, thirteen inch mouse pad yeah. in black. In black, yeah. and I gotta tell you, if this is what that sleeve looks like, I'm not I'm not trading in my MacBook. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I mean, the black leather looks super sleek and nice for me personally. I love the rich patina you get with the brown leather and the black leather, you know, it starts dark and just gets darker. So I, I like the, the more, I don't know how to say it, but like the, the funkiness you can get with the brown leather. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah the, the black's really nice. I actually have, uh, where is it? Cause you actually, you actually sent this to me three years ago. I'm going to show you this. The old brown one. I got one right yeah, here. So this, this is the bigger one. So I'm going to show you guys the different sizes here. So, uh, this is, this is the bigger one right here. But you guys can see. Oh, you so barely I, use yours. I, I'm really nice with look my at, stuff. Look at mine. It's all like destroyed. I got like. <laughs> but I have lots. I have lots of little scratches and everything like that. Uh -huh. But again, I don't mind the way it looks. So again, everybody, I got this mouse pad at least three years ago. Yeah. And this has been on my desk up until last week when I got the black one. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want an example of how this stuff wears and whatnot, and how you know, how great it still looks, again, minimal branding. You guys went with just the Nomad here. We, on here, we had the Horween um, naming and whatnot. So, again, really nice. Um, oh, what I think is really nice about stuff like this is that you guys, it's it's not just cell phone accessories that you guys have. You guys have, like, again, I showed the, I showed the, um, the, sorry, the, the passport wallet there. Yeah. Um, and Ooh, actually, pull mine out. You, you have the regular wallet. Is that the passport? That's the modern wallet? one. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's the one I have upstairs. Um, I actually have, and, one. and I actually have your regular flip wallet, your your minimal one that has uh -huh. the has Good. the has the tile integration. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my yeah. go-to wallet. Can you, Mine's downstairs. you... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see? We have stuff everywhere. We just yeah. forget to bring it, right? So, um, in terms of partnerships and whatnot, because I know now when you go to your website, there's different things and different and brands whatnot. And I don't mm -hmm. want to rattle off anybody, uh, but you guys are still working with Tile with stuff like that, correct? Yeah, we have Tile. We did a battery pack with Tile a while ago. We're not making that anymore. We're you know working on the next iteration. Um, but then we have uh, cases for that are, that facilitate moment lens usage. Uh, yeah, so moment lenses, if you guys, you guys are still with you, Moment. Then? Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who don't know Moment, they make aftermarket lenses for your iPhone or any basically any device. Uh, that really up your photography and videography game. Mm -hmm. um, ba, ba, ba. And then we have tile stuff in the wallet as well as in the passport wallet. Um, and then we're always looking at and evaluating other partnerships uh, as they come up. That's awesome. I mean, I, like, I was going through there and there's just so many different uh, other accessory companies and it just kind of makes sense for you guys to kind of all work together and no totally and the e-commerce yeah. e space is so so friendly and so encouraging. It's similar mm -hmm. to the YouTube creator space like everyone wants to work together and help each other out. And if you work in one area and we work in another, let's promote both our brands together and do something really, really neat together rather than trying to compete and fight each other and do everything else in between. It's it just makes sense to work and make some great content together or products together. Awesome. I, again, I just love how grounded you guys are. And, um, I think, I think Noah wants to describe you guys as like a little big company or big little <laughs> yeah. company or something like that. I, I forget which version of that, but yeah, yeah, he often does that. Yeah, no, it's great. And, uh, and uh, I've met a, a bunch of your staff, including all the gals down there and in, in, mm -hmm. in, in California, everything like that. So uh, terrific, terrific team. Now, I've got a couple of questions specifically yeah. for Chuck. Uh oh. Not, not Chuck the Nomad guy, just Chuck. Chuck, Chuck the human. What is Chuck? I'm going to put you on the spot here, man. You got to be careful because I know the boss is watching. Yeah. Uh, what is Chuck's favorite, right now, favorite Nomad product? 
Honestly, I'm the work worst tech consumer in the world. I have an iPhone 8. I have AirPods oh. V1. And I wow. don't have an Apple Watch. Uh, that said, I do love the AirPods cases. They're fantastic. Okay. The new MacBook Pro cases are amazing. When we were talking about them over the, year, the past year or so, I was like, I don't know, guys. But I've seen the final version of it, and I'm really stoked on it. Okay. Uh, and then the Kevlar cables. Um, yes. I, I do a ton of outdoors activities. I'm fishing. I'm backpacking. I'm road tripping, et cetera. Mm-hmm. The cables are just indispensable for me. Awesome. Now, this is a key question I ask a lot of people on stream. I've asked, I've asked, I've asked I Justine this question on mm-hmm. some other streams. I've asked MKBHD this question on other streams. Mm-hmm. I've asked Mr. Beast this question recently on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for this? Yep. Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> um, this is important stuff. Yeah, why not? I mean, it's two pieces of bread and a piece of meat. I'll call it a sandwich all day. It's got some condiments on there. Like, yeah. Uh, so here comes the chat. Yeah, they all—they all knew. They all knew it was coming. Here it comes. Oh uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> they, the people here know. They know. They know Zach. So, so yeah. you're gonna say you're gonna say a hot dog is a sandwich? I don't see why not. I mean, it's a long okay. sandwich, but like, so is it's a, a sub. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully disagree and tell you that a hot dog is its own creation. It's its own glorious. No. Thing. You're from Canada, so you can have your own crazy opinions about sandwiches. <laughs> I'll let you keep that to yourself. I love it. I love it. All right. So we're uh, coming up. As I said, you want to shoot through the, the chat a little bit? And then... Yeah, actually, I was, I, was, I was going through here. So if anybody okay. else has any more questions for Chuck, I'm going to go through here um, and see what now here. So, so uh, oh, so a question here from Stephen D. Will Nomad be making cases for iPad Air 4th Gen 2020? We're working on something. I think there's a web page on our site right now where you can sign up for notifications. Okay. Um, if not, shoot me an email, chuck at nomadgoods.com, and I'll make sure you're on the list. But we're working on something right now. Perfect. Perfect. Let's go through. I'm going to, I'm scrolling up here a little bit. If you guys see any, D says the patina case, uh, sorry, the, the case is patina so well. Absolutely. Leather is life. My current Galaxy Fold is leather. So, technically, T, what's up, man? Uh, let's see what else we have here for questions. Uh, Canines or something else. Hey. Watch yourself, Latrell. Watch I agree. yourself. <laughs> oh, no, I say there, there's something else in a good way. Love my my friends to the north. All right. So, uh, if you guys have any other, like I said, if you guys have any more questions, whatnot for for Chuck here before we kind of wrap up things, uh, I can't believe it's almost been an hour. Wow. So, so uh, likewise, this I appreciate great. being here. Now, is there anything? Okay, actually, let, let me let me kind of put you on the spot here while we mm-hmm. wait for some more questions to come in. Uh, CES tech. Okay, so CES this year, unfortunately, is not in person. It's an online thing. Um, do you guys have anything planned at, at Nomad? Like, I don't mean in, in terms of uh, product to reveal, but are you guys doing any virtual rooms or anything like that that maybe other creators should know about? Honestly, no. We're keeping yeah. it pretty mellow. Uh, it we low went key. pretty big last year at CES. Mm-hmm. Um, 2020 was pretty gnarly. <laughs> okay. From a, like a work perspective, like a lot of a lot of curveballs going our way. Um, so I think we're just kind of keeping it low key. Um, that said, I'm always around. So if anyone wants to hang out, let me know. Shoot me an email. I run the Twitter account at Nomad, so tweet at me. And so you're the guy behind the Twitter, for the most part, yeah. For the most part, okay. Ninety percent okay. of the time, yeah. Perfect. And who do, who does most of your? Uh, do you guys do most of your product photos in house? Like your your Instagram is is brilliant as well. Uh, the Nomad. We Instagram. do. We we work with a contractor out in Arizona, James. James, shout out, you're the man. Um, but we also do a bit of stuff in house, and then we also like work with random creators all over the place. So it's kind of a, a mix of everything, if you will. Okay. Okay. And can you give us any sort of hints or anything like that on things that might be coming up in the next month or anything like that? Anything you guys are working on at all? Is there anything you can hint at? You, or? Sh- you showed off a metal band earlier. Uh-huh. There might be a new version coming. Oh. There might be MagSafe stuff soon. A MagSafe, yeah. Okay. There might be more wireless chargers soon. Okay. There may or may not be... Oh, man. I think that's... There's, there's some color iterations coming. In the near future of some of our mm-hmm. products um and then like i said the uh, product team kind of keeps me in the dark so i'm i'm <laughs> i'm a little bit less surprised than you guys when any okay. new products are dropping so but, they uh, just make it and then you just show it off gotcha and then it's up to me to figure out how to sell it yeah gotcha okay question here from stephen d chuck is no man looking to make a charging case for the airpods max the one that comes with the apple is crap <laughs> it's been quite decisive a with purse. that yeah, the the purse, the purse, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. So um, actually, that that was a good question. I know that there is uh, a couple out there, but I, I I I am hoping that you guys do some sort of Horween leather thing. Can you do you have any insight on that or any 
I can't give too many details, but we are looking at some ideas. Okay. Save it at that. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Okay. So Latrell's got a question here. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to know if my Nomad, uh, if the Nomad leather laptop sleeve would be good for my 13-inch uh, Galaxy Book S since it's meant for a MacBook. I, I would say I, I don't know the the Galaxy Book S dimensions or stats at all. Um, but if you compare the dimensions of the Galaxy Book S with the MacBook Pro 13 inch, mm -hmm. and if they're the same or smaller, then you're good to go. That's what I did. So when you sent me that, the first thing I did is I took a look at the 16 inch MacBook Pro mm -hmm. and I compared those dimensions to mine and then, okay, mm -hmm. it's going to fit. So uh, Latrell, uh, just uh, take a look at the dimensions, the exact dimensions on GSM Arena, for example, and uh, look up the dimensions of the 13 inch, compare it to what you have and you should be good to go. Um, yeah, as long as it's, I think as long as it's a slim profile, you're good. Yeah. You should be good to go. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we've come up on one hour. So yeah, Viper, he wants it. <laughs> uh, I think I expect emails shortly after this, Chuck. Yeah. So. <laughs> no, emails for sure. And then Renee, you got to tell me what you mean by fan, fine Mandalorian leather. It sounds a little Mandalorian leather. Yeah. He mentioned something in the comments about that. <laughs> I don't know. We'll but get you. We'll get you in touch with them. But anyway, uh, yeah. anything else you want to uh, anything else you want to address or talk about in terms of, of Nomad Chuck before we uh, kind of wrap up things here? Um, no, honestly, like this has been fantastic. I really enjoy talking with you always. I enjoy inter engaging with the community at large. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys, like I said, if I'm running the Twitter account. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, tweet at me, DM me. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn or whatever too. Um, yeah, if you have any like ideas too, if you if there's products you want to see from Nomad. Mm -hmm. Don't don't hesitate to reach out. We're always kind of tapping into the community to see what you guys want and trying our best to to pr provide the products you want rather than just the products we would like to see. Perfect. Well, thanks for your time, Chuck. I really appreciate you being here, and uh, hopefully some of the Nomad crew also got to watch and whatnot. Uh, big hello to Brian and Noah as well, and everybody else down there in California, and worldwide with the team. Uh, everybody, thanks for being here tonight. It's been a great stream. If you're watching the replay here, again, uh, links are down below for timestamps. Well, I'll, be I'll be putting those up here after. I'm going to pick a rant. Let's I want you to pick a random person from the chat here, uh, Chuck, and we're going to ask them a simple question. I want a leather um, bl blanket. <laughs> pick a random person from the chat. Right? Leather blanket, that'd be heavy. That would be. Uh, Jermaine King. Okay, Jermaine King. He's still here. So if you're still, oh, where's Jermaine King? Where, oh, yeah. I, I meant to click, there he is right there. Jermaine, if you're still here, question for you, Mr. Jermaine. Do you want the walking robot outro or do you want the water driveway? <laughs> Jermaine King, do you want the robot or do you want the water driveway? I, I've been asking people this lately. So Jermaine, if you're still there, walk. He says, yes, that's not an answer. <laughs> do you want the robot or the water driveway? That's it all. There's both of them. Can you, you like hit I, both buttons at the same time? No, I can't play both of them. I think he wants the robot. We'll go with the robot here. So we're going to find it here. We'll let you guys go. Thanks for everybody for being here. Uh, Chuck, I'll talk to you post show here in a minute. Everybody take care. Cheers. Cheers.